are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich, at the Jacklich Law Group. Good evening from CQ Stadium. This is the Big Dog Post Game Show. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason Viner. And, of course, tonight's show brought to you by the big dog himself, Rick Jacklich, and your Terrapin hometown IT team at Viner Four Gates. Maryland wins by a lot, but Mason, I tell you, not a dominating performance. And early on, boy, it did not look good. But what did you see tonight? Yeah, uh, Charlotte came out ready to go, punched Maryland in the face. Uh, took a while for Maryland to kind of react to that bad play early by Leo. We saw another interception from him uh, there in the second half that just did not need to happen for Maryland. But really, Charlotte came out ready to go. I mean, credit to Biff, credit to his staff getting uh, their guys ready to come out here and try and make a statement. And, and for a while there, it looks like Charlotte may hang around in the game, but the Terps ultimately just overpower Charlotte with their rotational pieces. Uh, a lot of what Ahmed and I talked about in the preview podcast kind of came true. Maryland just outlasted Charlotte and made some big plays down the stretch. Uh, yeah, Maryland certainly comes back. And I uh, know Loxley's going to talk about the culture and, and how that reaction shows that they've made progress because maybe a few years ago they would have crumbled at that point. But you have to be awfully troubled the way this game started. Now, Charlotte scores 14 points in the first three minutes. It happened quick, and it took Maryland a while to get back in it. They only have nine by the half. And then, somewhere in that third quarter, the, the switch flipped on, and Maryland starts going at Charlotte, starts running the ball with emphasis and with the type of violence you want to see in a football game, and that sets up the long passes, and all of a sudden, Simple football starts to dominate over the Charlotte 49ers. The complex routes, all that went away. There's a lot of straight on blocking, and you let him be cut off of that. And then it was a much easier throw down the field to make for Leah. Fewer reads, fewer things to go wrong. I liked what I saw when they really needed to do something. They played real straight ahead football. And I think that's a good sign because that's how you're going to win in the Big Ten. We'll be back to talk about Maryland's defense. It did pretty well tonight after this break and this word from Rick Jacklich. The biggest difference in a truck accident versus a car crash is the investigation that the lawyer has to do right from the beginning of the case. Number one is obtaining the logbooks of the driver to show that the driver was not rested properly according to federal law. Uh, investigating through the black box and getting an expert to figure out from the black box of the truck the speed of the truck or where the truck had been. So it's just different type of handling. Usually you have catastrophic injuries involved with tractor trailers as well. You have a massive, heavy vehicle that strikes a much smaller vehicle. You're going to have more massive injuries. So it's a different ball game. And if people are injured in a truck crash, they really, really need to find a lawyer that knows what he's doing with truck crashes. We're going to head into the press conference in a moment. And then you can also watch Mason and Ahmed's postgame show, which a little different than this one. It'll be after the press conference. Take a look. Maryland's defense really did what they've done all year. That is two defensive touchdowns they've given up in the last 16 quarters of football. And I think it was a blown assignment. They got the first one, and then the last one was in garbage time, and I'm still not sure the guy scored. Yeah, he scored. He scored. I was down here in the end zone. He uh, definitely got in. But I was in the other end zone waiting for the dancing and singing part. So uh, and, and here... Is that video Mike Loxley leading the singing tonight? What 
did you make of the defense? A defense that held a pretty shifty Charlotte quarterback in check for about 57 minutes. Yeah, I think a uh, really, really strong improvement over last week in terms of containing the quarterback, trying to figure out uh, that. This is definitely a test. Uh, the Charlotte offense moved the ball right to left really quickly. Didn't quite have the skill players to beat Maryland one-on-one. -on -one, but, again, really good game planning from Charlotte early to get their quarterback out in space. And then the Terps, really good uh, reaction to that. I'll go back on one thing you said. 14-9, to you're losing this game at halftime. Absolutely unacceptable from this football program and the stage they're in. Um, that certainly cannot happen. They will play plenty of teams that will jump on uh, slow starts like that, and, and you'll see yourself down 20 nothing after a quarter if you come out and play the way you did. That isn't the standard for Maryland. I'm really interested to see what Locke says about that piece of this game, but like you said, they came back, they punched back, they, get, they got back in control of the game, which is improvement year over year if you're looking at it in, in the long lens, but Friday night it looks like they have a quarterback coming here for Virginia that can throw the ball around the field, and we'll, we'll see what happens then. Yep. Oh, once again, Maryland wins by enough, but it wasn't great football. I'm still waiting to see great football from this group. But the third and fourth quarter, when Maryland needed to be physically dominant, they pulled that off. And, yeah, sure, it helps that Maryland has 85 guys that belong in a D1 football field now, and Charlotte does it, and that was part of, of what won the game. But that's what makes a team. And tonight, Maryland still played a lot of guys, but it was really effective later in the game look you're 2-0 this is really as i said it's a five game sprint you got to get to ohio state unbeaten still unbeaten virginia comes in here on friday we'll see if we can take one more and then it gets a little tougher with a trip to michigan state and then in indiana but uh you know you only win the games you're playing so far it's 2-0 not thrilled but it's 2-0 for Mason, this is Wayne. Bruce is away from the camera this evening, and we will see you after the press conference. Good evening from College Park.